Performance Max campaigns have become the go-to for Google Ads marketers. However, they are prone to sudden changes in performance, seemingly coming completely out of the blue. And this can be really frustrating, especially when things have been going so well. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Nick Armenis. I'm your friendly Google Ads guy. I'm a Google Ads specialist that specializes in scaling e-commerce stores. In this video, I wanna show you how I go about personally resurrecting a failing Performance Max campaign. This really applies to campaigns that were doing well in the past that have recently started underperforming. So you've got a Performance Max campaign, you believe it's underperforming. What's the first thing I want you to do? I want you to go into your Google Ads Manager and I want you to identify where the drop occurred, like exactly when, what has happened, what has occurred. So depending on what has happened, will determine what you need to do next. I want you to go in and have a look. Did your return on ad spend or conversion value over cost? What you're actually spending on ads drop? Google Ads is based on search volume. So these changes can often occur just purely because less or more people are searching. If if less people are searching, you're obviously going to make less sales. The other thing to look at is, did your conversion rate drop? These are the things I want you to look at. Go into your performance and look at it at a top level. And then from there, you can drill down and see what has occurred and why. The second thing I want you to look at is historical metrics and seasonality. Just think logically, is this a seasonal change or drop in my business? Because if you're selling a winter product and summer rolls around, obviously your sales are gonna drop off. If you're comparing Q4 to any other quarter of the year, you're you're gonna be severely disappointed. You need to be comparing like for like periods and you need to be comparing the exact sales you're running. If you go and run a big sale, your sales for the following weeks and months may drop off because you're pulling sales forward from the future into the present. Is this normal? Is it seasonal for my business? And make sure you're comparing apples to apples. The next thing I want you to do is look at your Google Ads change log. You can actually have a look and see what changes you've made in the past and what they were and when they occurred. And I want you to look at the period where you've identified performance dropped off, go to that specific date and see, did you make any changes to your campaigns on that day? You'd be surprised how often one small change can cause a big issue. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it happened in that Performance Max campaign. It could be any sort of setting you've done in the account. You might have stopped advertising in your search campaigns or in other areas, and this has caused a drop off with your Performance Max campaign. Simply reversing these changes can often lead to increases in performance. The next thing I want you to check, and it's extremely important, is under Tools and Settings, go to Conversions and have a look to see if your conversion tracking is actually recording conversions. If no conversions are being reported into to Google Ads, but you are making sales and Google Ads is the only avenue you're selling or you know you are getting sales from Google Ads, your conversion tracking may not be working properly. Because Performance Max optimizes for our conversion events, it's very important that these events are working and they're tracking correctly. Otherwise, all your learning will be reset and Google will have to start from scratch as to what it needs to now optimize for. So conversion tracking being working correctly is very important for Performance Max performance. Now, for those who are running e-commerce stores, review your Google Merchants in a feed. Do you have any account issues or product disapproval? This may seem minor, but I suggest checking this every single day. If a high selling or one of your best selling products goes out of stock or is disapproved or things like that, it can make a huge impact to your ad. Making sure that merchant feed is clean and free of errors can really help with your Performance Max performance for an e-commerce store. The other factor I see happen quite frequently is, has someone changed your item IDs or made some significant change to your product feed data? I've seen it happen so many times where someone will go and completely change a feed or an item or a bestseller. And what happens is performance just drops off because Google sees this new item ID, this new product as something totally new to the business and a totally new product. And so you re-entered now into that auction with no historical data on that particular product. And so any changes to items in your feed can cause major changes to performance. If this happens, it can be quite hard to reverse. Whenever you're making a feed change, just make sure you're not messing with that item ID or that you're keeping as many factors similar as possible. If it does happen, you'll likely have to kind of start again and lower your budget down and make sure that that product starts to get seen again by Google and then go through the normal optimization process. If you need help optimizing, lots of videos on the channel on Performance Max optimization. The next thing I tend to look at is I review the campaign, the 
PMAX campaign at the product level? Are any key products out of stock? Have your best sellers just stopped selling out of the blue? Has a seasonal item stopped selling? Has someone made changes to your SEO titles and descriptions and now you're appearing for different search terms? Has the campaign started spending budget on different products, products that don't normally convert or haven't converted in the past? If this has occurred, you will have to change the structure of your PMAX campaigns, exclude some products, move products into other campaigns or asset groups, and just make sure that those best sellers keep working and keep firing. If the product's gone out of stock, obviously you're going to need to get back in stock of that product. And in the meantime, you may need to lower your budgets until that happens. I am also toying, uh, playing with some scripts in this space to kind of help you shift spend into areas where your products sell well. So spend in the areas that sell and don't spend in other areas and use scripts to automate that. Number eight, and this one is really simple but can work, is lowering the budget. Simply lowering the budget can actually fix a performance max campaign. What happens is as you increase the budget, particularly on high spend, Google's going to go for broader and broader search terms. And therefore, if you lower the budget, it's gonna go back to those specific search terms and therefore your return on ad spend will be better. If you have too low of a budget and the space you're playing is competitive, you may need to increase the budget to actually be seen in the auction. Otherwise, you're probably just not even seen or you're seeing very low and therefore not converting. Another thing you can do is consider adding a target row as if one isn't already set. Try lifting it to above what you've been getting for the last seven to 30 days. Removing a target row as can actually also work. And therefore sometimes actually just removing the target row as may fix your campaign. The next factor is looking at the auction insights tab within your performance max campaign. Have a look to see if any competitors are increasing their impression share or appearing above you in auctions more frequently. If a competitor has increased their bids or spend in any way, this will obviously impact your campaign performance and you may need to increase your spend to match it or improve your conversion rate and click-through rate to try and outrank them. You can also do some feed optimization to try and improve your product feed so that you appear high in the auction. You can also, building on that, review the actual Google Shopping auction or Google Shopping tab and see, is there a new competitor? Are other people selling your same products with the same or similar images? Is it appearing more often than your listing? Use incognito, try different devices, different friends' phones, computers. This is very subjective, but you can get an idea of, oh, hey, this person is coming up all the time. It's not perfect, obviously. I don't like it when my clients do it because it isn't a great way to look at it. It's subjective. But if you're looking at it on different devices, different times, things like that, then you can get an idea of who's appearing. And if someone's coming up a lot more often for you on your bestseller, obviously your performance is gonna be impacted and you need to outrank them. One thing you need to know is that sales velocity, so how many of a product you sell can impact where you appear and does impact where you appear. So if you slow down, then someone can outrank you if they're selling more products than you because Google goes, oh, customers are converting, this is a better, advertiser. The next thing you can do is can you make changes to your price to drive more volume of sales so you can then appear higher in the auction. This one can actually help quite quickly. If you drop the price, you start making more conversions, your performance may be restored relatively quickly just by simply doing a price change. Also works the other way. If your product is too cheap and you can increase the price and make more money, therefore increasing your return on ad spend, this can also be beneficial. The next factor is, is the economy and online sales in your region going well? Check financial news publications, e-commerce sites, government statistics websites. If things aren't going well, according to that data, then you will be impacted globally as well. So if the global market isn't doing well, and then there are plenty of research houses that will provide commentary on how e-commerce sales are going. You can also listen to earnings calls and look at annual reports of businesses in the e-commerce space where you're based. The last thing you can do is review your website for any major changes, especially on your product pages, cart and checkout. If you're having issues there, fix them and that will likely fix your performance. Okay, that marks the end of the video. If you have any questions or you need help scaling your store, I'll leave some useful links below to get in touch with me. And hey, if you've enjoyed the video and want more exciting content like this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And by doing so, you'll be part of my vibrant community and you'll receive fresh and insightful videos every single week. This is Nick Armenis, your friendly Google Ads guy, signing off and happy scaling, guys.